Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's and Morning Prayer on this Tuesday, the 24th day of November. Morning Prayer Rite 1 begins on page 42 of the prayer book. Today we'll look at the life of Clement, a first century bishop of the um, Bishop of the early church. We'll learn more about him during the service. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the Invitatory Psalm. This morning we will read together the Jubilate, found on page 45. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. To generation. We continue with Psalm number 78. We'll read a portion of it, verses 3 through 7. Verse 3 begins on page 695 of the prayer book. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob <clears throat> and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. The <clears throat> gospel passage assigned to today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, beginning at the 37th verse. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, <clears throat> and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. He also told them a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but, not, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me say to your neighbor, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take out the log in your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. The Word of the Lord. We can continue with Canticle 18, A Song of the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The 
According to early traditions, Clement was a disciple of the Apostles and the third Bishop of Rome. He is generally regarded as the author of a letter written about the year 96 from the church in Rome to the church in Corinth, and known as First Clement in the collection of early documents called the Apostolic Fathers. The occasion of the letter was the action of a younger group at Corinth who had deposed the elder clergy because of dissatisfaction with their ministrations. The unity of the church was being jeopardized by a dispute over its ministry. Clement's letter sets forth a hierarchical view of church authority. It insists that God requires due order in all things and <clears throat> that the disposed clergy must be reinstated and the legitimate superiors must be obeyed. The letter uses the term bishop and presbyter interchangeably to describe the higher ranks of clergy, but refers to some of them as rulers of the church. It is they who lead its worship and offer the gifts of the Eucharist, just as the duly appointed priests of the Old Testament perform the various sacrifices and liturgies in their time. Many congregations of the early church read this letter in their worship, and several ancient manuscripts included in the canonical, canonical books of the New Testament, along with the second letter, which is actually an early homily of unknown authorship. The text of First Clement was lost to the Western Church during the Middle Ages, and it was not rediscovered until the year 1628. Clement writes, The apostles received the gospel for us from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ was sent from God. Thus Christ is from God and the apostles from Christ. In both instances, the orderly procedure depends upon God's will. So therefore, when the apostles had been given their instructions and all of their doubts had been set at rest by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, they went forth in the confidence of the Holy Spirit to preach the good news of the coming of God's kingdom. They preached in country and city and appointed their first converts after testing them by the Spirit to be the bishops and deacons of future believers. And there you have the early life of Clement. We continue our service by saying together the Apostles' Creed, which begins on page 53 of the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. We begin with the Lord's Prayer, followed by suffrages B. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. We continue with the colleagues, beginning with the College for Clement. Almighty God, who didst choose thy servant Clement of Rome to recall the church in Corinth to obedience and stability, 
Grant that thy church may be grounded and settled in thy truth by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Reveal to it what it is not yet known. Fill up what is lacking. Confirm what hath already been revealed. And keep it blameless in thy service, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a moment to offer our prayers and thanksgivings. We give thanks for this week and again pray for safe travel for those who are traveling, but we also pray for safe sheltering in place that our pandemic may not grow to even larger proportions. We pray for wise decisions and right actions. We pray for all those whose lives are linked to ours. We give thanks for caregivers, doctors, first responders, those who serve in the military, and all those who help make our life better. We pray for a generosity of heart and sense of giving at this time of year. And we invoke our sense of thanksgiving for the world and for our many blessings. I invite your thoughts of thanksgivings and prayers. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside deep in our heart, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our service by saying together a prayer of St. Chrysostom, which can be found on page 59. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining Morning Prayer today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.